sure they have tons of questions. So, if we just put our instruments in our lap and maybe, who wants to ask a question? Carolyn, why don't you start us off? You're always the talkative one. <laughs> you don't have a question? You always have a question. Thank you for that question. It's actually a, a, a longer answer than you expect. Then I have to tell you how I came to the States. I'm going to stand on the podium so I can see everybody. I, as I told you, I grew, up in, I grew up in Taiwan. So when I had a chance to study in a bigger city, Taipei, my hometown is Kaohsiung, it's in the south. Um, we went, my parents took me there, but when the time it came to leaving me with my aunt, they couldn't. So we gave up the dream to pursue music. They took me back home, enrolled me in academic school. I was very good at, I'm not making this up, I was very good at memorizing the names of stalls. I thought I was going to become an earth scientist major in college. It has nothing to do with music, and you know what? It was a blessing for me. I was practicing, uh, probably many of you experienced tiger moms, right? For the Asian <laughs> community. Um, I was practicing for my parents, entertaining them when I was growing up. And it was, it was when music became not a career dream, that music became my own. And so, at this point, I had nothing to do with pursuing music. Then an American youth orchestra from Boston, affiliated with the New England Conservatory, came to my country, and I went to the performance. I mean, it was actually kind of a funny performance. They just got off the plane. And those of you who travel internationally, you know that's a long journey. Some of them were falling asleep during the, during the performance. They had to wake their step partner up. But they still did a good job. They somehow kept away. And after the performance, my older accompanist who could speak English took me backstage, uh, had me meet the conductor. His name was Benjamin Zander. Mr. Zander still conducts in Boston. And she asked him, do you have time to listen to this little girl play violin? He said, sure, come over to our hotel the next day. I show up at 9 o'clock in the morning. And the youth orchestra already checked out. The hotel was completely closed. The only place quiet enough for me to play for him was this closed bar in the basement. Nine o'clock in the morning, smell of beer. I had a terrible violin. I played my Winiowski violin concerto for him. He has rarely seen an Asian young musician who plays so much from the heart. I wasn't pursuing music. I wasn't doing it for my parents. He offered me scholarship on the spot to study in Boston. And so two months later, I came to Boston for the first time, not really speaking English, not really know, knowing how to eat salad for Chinese people. And that generation is cooked vegetables. Um, and so it was, it was a change, change for my life. But my parents thought I was coming to this country to become a concert violinist. When deep down, I knew, ha, finally I have the ticket to pursue my dream. So that was a long answer to your short question. Another See one? Yes. Yes. Uh, Ale Alexandra? Yes. Uh, what, make you, what made you choose violin to play? What made me choose violin? I think my father chose it for me. I don't know how, many of you, how you came to your instrument. Um, violin is a wonderful instrument. You get to play the melody. But I was always hearing more sound in my head. I don't, I don't want just the violin. I want the tuba sound. I, I want the, the trombone sound. I self-taught myself on trumpet. And so it's, you know, it, it, it's wonderful that I can master violin, but oftentimes you, you also have to do what you love, not just what your parents love, right? I saw a hand. What was your first opportunity to do Oh, you hit on a good one. This is, this is almost like fairy tale story. Remember, I told you that I came to this country, so I was 16. So I came as a junior in high school, pretty late. I was still having trouble learning English, and I had to do SAT and all that good stuff in my senior year to apply. So um, my, senior, my senior year, the youth orchestra that went to Taiwan and changed my life, now I was in it, and I was sitting in Janae's chair. I was second by the principal. Um, and we went on the, the tour to Spain, performing Mahler Fifth Symphony, Gustav Mahler, long symphonies. We were performing so many times, I secretly ordered, I secretly bought my first 
Volca Strug Conductor Score. It was a miniature book, just half of the size. So when we're on tour, sitting on long hours on the bus ride, I will take out my score and I will study what is the flute doing here, what is the oboe doing here. I didn't want my friends to see it because they would ask me questions, what is that? What are you doing with a score? And you know what happened. Mr. Zander was a pretty crazy, wonderfully creative, crazy conductor. Oftentimes he would say, who wants to conduct at the end of a rehearsal? Can you imagine I was just sitting there dying to raise my hand and I couldn't. So my step partner, um, her name is Annie, a sweet American girl, she went and talked to Mr. Zander. She said to Mr. Zander, well, Maya really wants to raise her hand, but she was too shy to raise her hand. So we were on tour and we performed in various cities. This was the last performance in Madrid. We always come into a venue and we have to do sound check. This is the first time I ever conducted an orchestra. I was sitting in Janae's chair and I was ready to tune on my violin when Mr. Zender just came to me and said, may I come up here and conduct the first movement of Mahler 5? That was my first experience and I think my, my friends were shocked that I have that in me because I was always so quiet. So that, that was it. There's something wonderful about working with young, young musicians because I hope at this stage you're, you're not worrying about life as much yet. There's not a burden of life as much as that in your homework and maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, <laughs> But you come to music with your whole heart. What we just did, dancing on the floor, know that how many Bill would do that in the concert. Maybe we'll do them out, but you know, um, with professional musicians, there is certain limitation. I mean, you have to work a certain way. You can't treat them like, like children. So I, I love working with children because we could try things that adults would never know. Wasn't that fun to feel the rhythm? You know, if you look at, and I'm not making this up, if you look at some of the best orchestras in the world, or Philharmonic, where you can look at them on, uh, online. They, there's a virtual concert hall, but also you, can prob you probably could Google them on YouTube and see the Berlin Philharmonic. I can promise you, they don't stand still when they perform. They move, they interact with each other. And so, I know both. I can't choose. I mean, I, I ended up doing both. You know, my, my me. That's what brought me here. you to do. So 
So have a dream. Yeah. I think that's an excellent way to end um, for now. Again, as we go to break, uh, Ms. Chen will be over here. I'm sure she'd be happy to say hi. And before she goes up the hall to